for joining. This is interview. Are you seeking for the courage and the knowledge to make a difference in this country? Today is a program with a difference. I welcome you to this interview. We have special guests put together more than 50 years of, years of experience working in corrections, community corrections, as well as institutional corrections. My two guests today would include the Director of Corrections, Mr. Hilary Herman, and a well-known Caribbean world social scientist, Dr. Niels J. Chaitan. Dr. Chaitan will tell you more about himself, but I want to let you know that in this country, as we look at tackling crime, there's one thing that we must do. If there's one thing that should unite us, we have one common enemy. And in our diversity, we need to unite. I welcome you to interview, and now I turn to the gifted Dr. Neil Chaitan. Dr. Neil Chaitan, welcome to St. Lucia. Tell thank, us more about yourself. Thank you very much, Mr. Smith. It's, yeah. my, it's my pleasure to be here. Um, you know, we, we're all part of the Windward Islands. Yes. Um, I was born in Grenada, of course, the spice island of the world, folks. And um, I bring that spice with me, by the way. However, I, I grew up much of my adult life in, in Toronto, Canada. Okay. For the last 39 years. Mm -hmm. Met the love of my life there, by the way, and she's part of what I do. Um, we are social in, uh, interventionists, and we are crime reduction specialists. Um, what we do is to create a systematic method of dealing with crime. You know, um, most of the time, and I have with me, you know, sitting right by me here, yeah. the director of corrections, and um, we, we sometimes think, well, crime has to be, the, the way we deal with it, let's lock them up, let's take them to court, let's put them away, right? Um, not many people look at the underlying roots of crime. Hold that thought, hold that thought. That's a very good thought. We'll come to that in a minute. Uh, Mr. Herman, um, just before Dr. Chaitan tell us about his background, just think of yours as well that you want to share with us. Mm -hmm. But Dr. Chaitan, tell us about, a little more about your professional background, your training. Um, I know you're a social scientist. What does that mean? Um, well, the, the truth about it, uh, I have a PhD in social and behavioral sciences. Okay. So it's, 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 it's a wide spectrum, by the way. Okay. Um, yeah, social, yeah, behavioral, that's, that's almost right. everything between the, right. that is with crime, that's the social dysfunctions, okay. that's with addictions, and, Every level, every level. So, um, however, my company is called Motivate for Change International. Sounds good. Right? right? It's also Toronto, the headquarters in Toronto. And right now, we run a satellite office in St. George's, Grenada, um, so we could respond to the Caribbean. Three years ago, um, we were asked by the, the government of St. Kitts and Nevis. They had a very, very high spiking in, in homicide. As a matter of fact, they had the highest homicide rate in the world. Okay. Of course, per, per capita, capita, per yeah. capita. And so we are called in there to, to do what we can to engage a, a framework, right? Uh, an overarching framework. Uh, because uh, Mr. Smith, uh, the Caribbean has wonderful, brilliant people. And I do not come to the Caribbean believing that I'm the answer. <laughs> On that note, hold that thought. Mr. Norman, <clears throat> you, at one time you served as the president of the Prison Association in the Caribbean. Yeah, Before you tell us more about it, tell us a little more about yourself presently and um, who you are. And tell us what we need to remember about Mr. Hillary Herman. Well, um, thanks for having me, Mr. Smith. Oh. Uh, of course, my name is Hillary Herman. I'm the Director of Corrections of the Borderly Correctional Facility. I um, returned home to St. Lucia in 2002 okay. to open the newly commissioned prison, the Borderly Correctional Facility. I am a soldier at heart. I was um, retired from the United States Army okay. after 27 years of service. Um, corrections has been my life over the last 30 years. Okay. Um, as you know, corrections is a science, yes. and it works every time it's tried oh. in all the right forms. Yes, yes. Um, we've attempted to do this in St. Lucia. However, we've had many restrictions. As you know, most of it has been financial. Yes. Um, we Borderly has not met half of its peaked performance. It just has not gotten there. Right. There is so much more that can be done. Um, in spite of that, we've had some very good success stories, and uh, we're hoping that that can continue. Okay, wonderful. Now, we have met this handsome gentleman. Yes. And um, everybody has fell in love with him. Yeah. You know what I mean, right? Yes. Uh, what do you think about Dr. Chaitan and what he brings to the table? But Dr. Chaitan, over the last six days, I mean, he's an amazing guy. Um, he has brought uh, some very, very positive initiative to us. And I think if we can 
just capture some of what he has suggested or right. some of what his own experiences has given him um, to apply it here in St. Lucia, I think we can reduce the crime rate. Yes, Dr. Chaitan, you, besides Mr. Herman, you met other persons in St. Lucia, Dr. Alfred, Dr. King. Um, well, I happen to get to know you, and of course, you and I go way back in terms of conversation. Um, what do you think about our professionals, Mr. Herman, and those that you have encountered? And what do you think our educational equity offers in regards to cooperating and collaborating with you? Okay, um, first of all, I must say I met some, some, some powerful people here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and you know what, uh, listening to the resumes and TVs is one right, thing. Right. Um, uh, 30 years is, is great, 27 years in the U.S. Army is, right. is great, but right. meeting the person, and, 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 and I'm sure it's, it's, it's almost the uh, same here, yes, you absolutely. know, it's reciprocal yes, here, yes. because um, you, you might have seen my CV, yes. but, yeah. and, and we spoke so many times That's on the WhatsApp, right. yes. but meeting the person and, and, and hearing the person, and uh, I, I think um, more than anything else, last night, mm -hmm. you know, a consultation, yeah. um, Dr. King is a guy I met and liked, liked quite a bit, right? Um, and to hear Dr. King give his own personal, personal story, yes, right. how this thing appeals to him and, and how it, what it causes him, That's how right. it affects his emotions. Mm -hmm. And not only that, his life moving forward. Yes. I mean, he said he was yes. an arrogant doctor. Yeah. Right, right. right. He was an yeah. arrogant doctor right. until this same situation visited his home. Right. 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 Now, whilst we're on that, you also had the privilege and the opportunity of meeting the Prime Minister. I did. Um, our Prime Minister is very passionate about crime reduction. Um, what, is, what was the experience meeting coming from Grenada, Canada, and you know, you have met many Prime Ministers as well. What stands out for you? Um, first of all, the, the Honourable Prime Minister um, the say it in, in, he's a cool guy. Okay. He's a cool guy, right? Um, mm -hmm. Very very, very, very warm, very warm. Um, in, in our meeting, I was sitting one chair away from him. Um, I felt, I felt very relaxed. Uh, he, he appeared to be someone who was very accommodating. Uh, and you know, and you know, Mr. Smith. Uh, many times when you meet a head of state, they want to give you. Oh, I, I know, I know. I heard about you. Five minutes and you're gone. Right, right. This gentleman sat down. Mm -hmm. This gentleman looked me in the eye. As I spoke to him, I showed him a process. Um, of course, I introduced to him our stop and think concept. And we'll get into that and in a while. And he left there with his hand filled. Right. 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 Now, of course, he, he also spoke about some of the some of the deterrents or some of the, the challenges that would make what we bring possible. Right. But I said to him, uh, Mr. Mr. Prime Minister, if there is a need, we once there is a need, it's going to happen. It's Wonderful. Happen, so. Wonderful. Well, about this time, we'll get ready to take a break. But just before I leave. Um, I want to let you know that this past weekend, we had a few programs. We will ponder on it, as well as um, we, we have some discussions and some plans going forward. We'll look at it. But before we look at this, we'll look at um, the root causes of crime. Somebody's wondering why is crime continuing to escalate, why we cannot get a hold on crime. And then you will give your impressions, and then we'll take it from there. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay tuned. Oi, you ain't realize you step on my toe. Well, do something about it. Uh. Gasa, I burst in that man. Hold on. If somebody try to cross you, Hold on. and if my thing start to take you, Hold on. no need for our own violence, cause the police is there to help you. Hold if on. a trouble start in this session, all right, no need for aggression. Hold on. We don't want no violence in the place. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Control your temper, all right. respect each other. Don't let no trouble escalate, cause you know better. Control your temper, respect each other. Don't, do Don't let no trouble escalate, cause you know better. Control your temper. A message from Mission Boys, Studio 758, Acid Creations, and the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. Mr. Chaitan, Dr. Chaitan, Mr. Human, many people start and they stop. Hmm. I have to understand the difference between being interested and being committed. When you're interested in any topic, any subject, it takes a lot of your thinking, perhaps, <coughs> and, and your, your emotions to get involved. But not until you take action, you're not committed. 
you're not committed. You can do all the talk, have the right words. But we have taken action over the weekend that's gone. And we had the opportunity, and I'm a very action-oriented individual. For me, it's a good thing to have conversation, but I'm more practical. Let us just reflect on what took place over the weekend. Um, you had the great opportunity of going to the prison and to participate in power ground worship, power ground sports, right? Mr. Herman, you had front row seat, if I may add. You actually saw what took place. Considering what you saw, what you heard, is there any value that you think that was added? Or how should we continue to engage inmates even when they're incarcerated? Dr. Well, the, the truth about it is that um, incarcerating someone and just leaving them on their own, it's, it's punitive, but it's also detrimental to the person's health. Right. Whether it's psychosocial health or even the physical health, right? Right. Um, <clears throat> people that, are, and, and, and I said uh, this morning, people that we, 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 we put in, in cuffs, Oh, sorry, we restrain, that's a better word, right? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. It's because somebody was not able to restrain them before. Okay. You see, we had parents talking to them, they had teachers talking to them, trying to restrain them. But human beings don't like the freedom to be taken away, whatever right, they, right. they perceive that to be, right? right. Mm -hmm. So once the rules and laws cut your freedom, that's, that's what we perceive, right? right? So they don't want to stop right. until they're forced to stop. Okay. Now when they're forced to stop, because we are trying to get through to them. Son, sit down, let me talk to you. Student, come in my office, let me talk to you. And they see all these things as negative. But now, when the judicial system stops you, you are stopped. Right. Now, what do we have? A captive audience. Right. We couldn't talk to them before. They were yes, just yes. every. So what the, the, cor the correction facility needs is a strong social rehabilitative piece. Right, that will get to the heart of these people, but not only that, because sometimes, Mr. Mr. Herman, as professionals, what we bring is the theories that yes. we studied. Yes. Right. Yes. Look at what we did this weekend. Right. We shared the lives of two creatures, right? Mm -hmm. A bird mm -hmm. and a caterpillar. Yes. Correct. And look at how they got the message. Mm -hmm. Look at how they got the message. They applied it, right? Okay. When I got them back on Sunday, they, came, they were hugging me. Right. Why? Because they don't know me, right. but we got into the heart. And right. so every, every time we incarcerate, we need to have a hard gripping component right. of social change, rehabilitation, right. that will work along. Otherwise, we are exporting back to the community as criminals. Okay, and, and I'm sure you have in your first aid kit of social medicine, you do have some prescriptions, whether it's um, stop and think, or whether it's the um, either program mm -hmm. or whether it's the making and the breaking of a criminal and that which perhaps I can remember now you'll mm -hmm. tell us a little mm -hmm. more about that. But Mr. Herman, um, how important it is for the community to join you whilst the individuals, whilst we have the young men or the ladies in, in prison, how important it is to be part of that with you? Mr. Keith, the reintegration piece mm -hmm. which is the missing link right. in our bodily correctional facility, mm -hmm. there, that doesn't exist. Okay. And where it shows itself is when we have 47 individuals returning to the facility between March 26 and July 30th. Mm -hmm. With 47 individuals returning to our facility, which means um, that they've been to Borderly at least twice. Okay. So in not preparing them for the world outside. There is no support system that helps them. There's no guidance. Chances are mm. the cycle continues. continues. Right, right. Okay. And that's where your organization, such mm. as back, back on Track, can be very instrumental in assisting these inmates in reintegrating back okay. into our society. Okay, um, normalization, there's a way to deprisonize anyone. It's first of all, is to have the person thinking outside and bringing the outside on the inside, right? So that the individual can feel part of society. Um, in your training and experience, what are the best activities in your mind, Dr. Chaitan, that will be suited to help inmates in, in having an appreciation of being in incarcerated? Because most guys, they're angry with themselves that they got caught, <clears throat> right? So how do you get them to understand that they must accept that there is punishment, and there are principles, 
But whilst they embrace that, they must look outside. What, what process yeah. you, well, um, you suggest? And, and, and I think I, I really, I really um, demonstrated it mm -hmm. with that of the caterpillar. Right. right. That of the caterpillar. What is the caterpillar doing? The caterpillar is not yet a butterfly. It's in the maturing stage. So when you see the caterpillar is destructive, it's a menace right. to society. You know he's growing. He's not there. But what we do, we treat people that are still maturing as if that's a final product. Right, right, right. right. Now, these people would not go in a position to where they would get what we want to give, impart to them, so they could mature well rounded. So sometimes the cell becomes a cocoon. Yes. Right? Right. And, and uh, like I say in the stop and think, stop yourself before you are stopped. Okay. Because you will be stopped. One year. Stop and think while you're outside. Right. Use your brain while you're outside. Somebody comes in your face and curse your mother and want to hurt you, right? Or whatever it is, disrespect you. You could do two things. You could go for it, right? Because you're not stopping and thinking about what your consequences are. Or you could stop yourself and walk away. No, if you go for it, you still be stopped. We will stop you, right? right. right? And then no, you go in there. It's a time when you're going to sit down there and say, oh my God, how did I end up here? Right. right? How will they end up here? Now, hopefully, that the cell is not going to be not just punitive, but it be empowering. Right? Just like the caterpillar stays inside there, and when it breaks out, what is he? A beautiful butterfly. Now, a changed person. Right. Now, let's move away from being descriptive. Let's look into a, a prescriptive um, approach. And we're looking now, we're opening now your first aid social scientists covered Kit. what is really the the roots of crime that you really want to speak about i know there are about 12 of them in the Whoa. so give, give us <coughs> give us a sense as to what they can okay see that um, look into. i'm gonna make this i wouldn't i wouldn't go into the 12 roots of c crime mm. that's too clinical for me yes, that's too yeah. clinical that's yeah. going to take the rest of the evening yeah. we don't okay. have time for yeah. that right, right. Uh -huh. however one of the things that that drive crime is mm. our ability our our inability to control our impulse okay you see, God gave us big brains. Mm -hmm. And except you are mentally retarded or something like that, you, it works. Right. We know what we should do. Right. But our impulses drive us. Our triggers, I dare say, mm -hmm. drive, yes. drive us, right? right? So what I have done in my toolkit, you asked me, and I have it here with me. Okay. Um, you know, you've seen it over and over, right? There is it, the poster, right? It's simple, Mr. Smith. It's okay. simple. And okay. people think that could not be answered. Trust me, this is the answer. Okay. Well, this, talk to our audience. This is yeah. the, folks out there, this is the answer not to just commit a crime. Why call a crime? Crimes in the boardroom. Crimes committed by the boss. You see, sometimes we, we would have done well and succeeded in life. But if, and when we reach a certain height, we plateau out and we think we our comfort zone. That point in time, we're not thinking too, too much because I've, I've, I've reached there. That's the time we're most vulnerable, right? So what, what does it say? Always. Notice what I said, Mr. Smith. It didn't say sometimes. Always. Because the time you didn't stop and think, you may have to pay. Right, right. Always stop and think before you proceed. Now, this simple concept, as simple as it seems, Right, we go through the rudiments of it. We've created a psychological pause mechanism. Okay. Right? So that when you attempt it, when your impulse is driving, when your heart is going because somebody's in your face, right. think about your plans, man. Think about that you, you're doing a bachelor's degree. Think about yes. that you're doing CXCs. Or think about that you have, on, if you don't think about your plans, think about where you're going. Or your loved ones. Or, or your, your loved, loved ones. Or your loved ones. Your beautiful. wife, your children. That's that correct. Should be able to That's correct. Your mother. Mm -hmm. your, your mother. mother. At least yeah. your mother. Yeah. Your mother, right? Yeah. Think about it and say, boy, you know what? Let me walk away from that. Yeah. Yeah. No, saying it is easy. Boy, right. this thing is hard to do. Right. This thing is so hard to do. But that's why we come with Project Stop. I think into St. Lucia. We want to, so we want to give it to your, your inmates so much, right. right? So they understand that they have the power to decide differently, right? right? And so it doesn't just come with this. It comes with a manual. Parents, parents and teachers, it comes with a, a manual. Good, good. We Very will good. leave that in the, in, in, in the prisons. Thing. And they could go through it. Counselors go through it. Right, right. And help them master the technique. Because trust me, saying it is easy, right. doing it is <laughs> difficult. Yes. Um, before you tell us about the making and the breaking of a criminal, uh, Mr. Herman, um, there are many programs that one could 
get off the net and there are many things that one could look at in terms of managing an institution. Um, what can you say besides CXC um, certificates, among other things? What, if you had the power and you had the resources, um, would you embrace what Dr. Chaitan is advancing or what, what would you like to see happen going forward? Absolutely. Um, what Dr. Titan is talking about, I mean, it is a program that can be very successful in our institution. Okay. Um, one of our restrictions or our needs is the is assessment of inmates. Okay. That right now we do not have, and that's a barrier. Right. Um, we need to assess the inmates and psychologists. Mm. We, we need that desperately. Right. And right. Until that is done, we don't have a true picture okay. of, <laughs> of what the sentence management should be like. Okay. The inmate should be assessed at day one. Mm. And from the very day he comes into our institution, his sentence should be managed right, right. until the day he leaves. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And that is a missing link within right. our country. And on that note, diagnosing a situation, right? The EDA program, right? What comments do you have based upon what Mr. Herman is saying? Okay, How important um, is diagnose? Um, <clears throat> well, uh, first of all, I, I want to applaud what you're saying because uh, clinical psych psychology is important there. Absolutely. Because if, if we come in to run programs there, you want to know... You want to know how it's affecting, how it's impacting the lives of criminals. Right. So that when, when they have a hearing, you could actually say, you could write a report, for example, and yeah, say, right, well, right. that's where they were, and that's where well, they, they are. are. Now. Right. now, with the EDA, the EDA brings, it's a framework, right? right? And then they say, we, we, we meet all these brilliant people here in St. Lucia. But the EDA gives, gives an overarching framework. Like I, say, like I said on the first day we came in, it's like a, ca a filing cabinet mm -hmm. right. with four drawers so that we could put all the special interests together so that we are not ricocheting, bullets ricocheting all over the place, right? Now the D, it's important to diagnose, right? It's important because we are treating, could you imagine uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Smith going to a doctor, mm -hmm. saying, Doc, my belly is hurting me. Right. And before the right. doctor draw your blood away, put the stethoscope on you, he's writing a prescription. Right. <laughs> right. That's, it. You're yeah, in, that's ridiculous. The man's going to yeah. kill yeah. you, right? Yes. The man's yes. going to yes. kill you, right? Mm -hmm. So it's important. The diagnosis part is very important. Okay. And so what we do, what we do in the diagnosis is that we bring stakeholders together. People from a, that, that are professionals in the line, teachers, uh, clergy, law enforcement, you say Tutmon? Tutmon. Wow, yeah, wow, tutmon. I got my password for it. Tutmon, right? Yes. You bring them together, tutmon. and then we look at what are some of the generic roots of crime and violence. Yes. Right? right? Mm. So, for, for example, um, law enforcement mm. would say, you know, Dr. Chaitan, of these 12 roots that you, you, you've shown us here, this one is ours. This one is germane to us. Right. Then we'll build a strategy for it. So that strategy now is being used by all the professions within that interest group. Yes. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think one of the problems that we, we face is that we are not enforcing. Mm -hmm. Because it, it most times is a talk shop and not a workshop. Right, right. And people don't want to walk the talk. Right, so right. then we have someone who implements it and holds our feet to the fire and say, Mr. Herman, you said you were going to do that for the prisoners. It's three months. What, what have, have you done? done? Right. Okay. Right? All right, wonderful. Um, well, time. So interesting, but we have to consider time. Um, you indicated that we have to diagnose the situation and offer prescription. Um, in the interest of time, what would you say should be the starting point in understanding the men in our society, in appreciating what's happening to them? <coughs> we know that there are certain neurological and scientific um, suggestions or proposals about what takes place. Since most of the, your clients, Mr. Human, are men, mm -hmm. Let's start. What's, what's the ABC of handling a man? Uh, is it? Is it? <laughs> we know in advertisement. Wow. I you know, think you, you have know, to ask Mr. Herman that. Really. You know, you, we know in advertisement, it's uh, you know to handle a man, you must have a nice Coca Cola shaped yeah, lady yeah, and yeah, all yeah, kinds yeah. of things, yeah. and or perhaps but, something muscular. But what? what but what you're is, asking a loaded question. <laughs> what's the ABC in handling absolutely. a man? We have just about five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, go ahead. no. Mm. The, the, the point I'm making is that look, mm. our men mm -hmm. right now, we are at the lowest ebb with, with, with male, right. in male life really, okay? We look at schools. Who get more suspended? Right. Guys, right? Mm -hmm. um, and where does it start? In the home. 
most of the time. So we have to start to ask that qu answer that question. We have to go to the root cause. Mm -hmm. Mama, were you an accidental parent or was that, that boy planned? Right? If the boy was accidental, there's a very good chance he wouldn't have a father, he wouldn't have a mentor in his life to mentor him, to make him a man. And by right. the way, let me say hi to all the strong St. Lucian women who have raised good men. But because they're successful men, it doesn't mean that they are well-rounded men. Okay. Okay. To get a well-rounded man, you need the female touch mm. and you need the male mentor and the male touch also, right? Yeah. And when you look at it, there are so many homes without a, a, a male figure in it, right? The, the, so, so we are raised by women. Then we go to schools. They say 76% of OECS teachers are females. Right, right. right. In Grenada, we got 23 high schools, and I cannot call them of four men that are principals. In my tongue in Grenada, where I work right now, the, the man stretch is female. So do you see what's happening there? Yes, whilst we're on that, just give Mr. Herman a perspective as to what's taking place in the mind when a, 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 a man is under stress. Um, you talk about the certain um, hormones, how they are released, and... Because Mr. Homan, as much as you would like to avoid many things, mm -hmm. like smoking in the prison, or alcohol, etc., what is happening? What, what, okay, in, in your what happened there is the, the, the man is under stress. Right. <clears throat> Whatever the stress is. Yes. Or is in pain. Right. Right? Emotional pain. Mm -hmm. Now, he needs a release. This boy is not doing well in high school. Right. His mother is on his case, his teacher is on his case, everybody is on his case. Right? So, he, f he fails. He falls through the crack. He's on the streets. Mm -hmm. He's on the streets. When I think about it, wow, what my mother gonna say? My father, if there's a father, I slap him in my head and say, boy, go and do better. Right? The boy's under stress. So what the boy need is some form of medication. Right. Some okay. form of medication to make him feel better. Right. Gentlemen and ladies, I'm telling you that marijuana will do it. Okay. Drugs will do it, but is it right? Is it is it wholesome and healthy for you? That's another question. Because when you smoke, smoke, you get a, what's called a euphoria or a high. Okay. What is releasing your brain are the happy hormones that make you feel better. You forget the, the, your mother's in your case, your dad's on the case. You forget Mr. Herman is on your case. Right. You just push her around. But guess what? When the high goes down, the problem is bigger. Now, uh, Dr. Titan, you will not believe it, but time has... Oh, no. <laughs> Doc, when you come back, tell us a little more about that. We'll, take, we'll come back here and we'll continue the conversation. We definitely so it, will. So your intention is to come back to St. Lucia and continue to um, inspire and inform so that we can get involved. Am I correct? Well, my brother, they're asking me to come back. The community okay. is asking me. Okay. And once the grassroots calls, right. I'll okay. respond. Wonderful. Mm. Well, Mr. Homan, we had Dr. Chaitan just for half an hour. Yes. Um, I find that um, it's very clear. It's full of passion, mm -hmm. full of information. And I'm quite sure that we are looking forward to meet Dr. Chaitan when he returns. Yes. Um, any closing remarks from you, Mr. Herman? Closing remarks other than the missing link at our okay. facility. Okay. And uh, your role, your mm. organization's role mm. in making sure, in filling that gap. Right. We've been unable to fill that gap okay. for many years. Right. right. And that has contributed to a high recidivism rate. Okay. And uh, I look forward to working further with you. And Dr. Chaitin has adopted me. <laughs> my closing <laughs> remark is, 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 is a commitment to you, sir. Yes. Uh, That's one, once my feet is on the Helen of the West, uh, you got me. Wonderful. All right, wonderful. Thank you. Wonderful. Well, Doc, let's hear your closing remarks. Thank what do you say? Well, uh, St. Lucia, listen, listen. I know, I know you're going through this, this scourge of, of crime. I ask you to be patient. I ask you to be please be tolerant because the boys that you think uh, we can have on this place with their guns are boys in pain. Are boys in pain? I know we don't want to. We don't want to be empathetic towards that. And I know there's a time for enforcement. There's a time to disarm them. Right. But when we disarm them, what do we do? Do we just hurdle them into a cell like an animal, or do we try to save them? My mantra has been, sir, mm -hmm. turn in menaces into mentors. Wonderful. And ladies and gentlemen, we need to be more secure in our country, you might say. We need to understand that it takes more to keep somebody in prison than to send them to university. You just count. Just look at $40 a meal or $50 a meal and you multiply that by 30 days. Mm. We pass $1,000 just for the meals. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Human will tell you to pay the staff <laughs> the money is not enough. So it has been proven that keeping somebody incarcerated costs more than sending somebody 
to university. Now, for us to pay so much money, if the cost of low living is much higher than the cost of high living, then what shall we do? So in our country, we have no choice. We can't run away. This is where we were born. This is, this is what we know. So we cannot turn the other side. If there is a young man that is giving trouble, you have a son that is giving problems, you have your husband that you need some help, ask for help. The only way I know, the only formula that I have to get what you want is to ask for it. This is what the Bible says. Ask and, and shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened to you. It's not too late. There is hope. Thanks for viewing and God bless.